<laughs> now that's a lot of damage! Ladies, gentlemen, and puppets of all ages, how would you like to absolutely rip through every enemy in the game with possibly the strongest blade and handle combo that I've found so far, in a way that synergizes beautifully with a number of different amulets and P-Organ buffs as well, to become an absolute wrecking ball? I mean, let's be honest, I'm not playing particularly well in this boss killing clip, and yet it would also be accurate to say that I destroy this boss, because all it takes with this weapon is a couple of solid chains of attacks to destroy an entire health bar. Of course, aside from the damage itself, the moveset is what really drives this build home. The light attacks are all quick, with good forward momentum on them as well, which means that you can keep up with an enemy even when they're backing away from you if you have to. But more importantly, the heavy attack on this thing is huge. Charged up, it has a ton of movement, with multiple hits involved too. Hell, I even clipped this boss mid-air in a jump attack because of the angle of it. It's really just an incredibly strong animation, and of course, sticking a big meaty blade on the end of the handle just makes the ease of hitting things really feel quite substantial. On top of that, while I don't get the most use out of it in this particular example fight, the variety and options this weapon has are crazy. One of the fable arts is straight up a parry with a slightly longer window than perfect guard, though the timing of it is a little bit off as there is a wind up, and if you manage to time it right within your buff windows, it hits for a metric truckload. And the other fable art is for trading strikes, getting a significant damage buff if it connects with the enemy the exact moment their attack connects with you. This one is super dangerous to use in active combat, especially against bosses where most of their attacks will stagger you out of it and result in you not getting the big hit, but if you can time it with a low stagger attack coming into you and get it right, the damage output that it has is insane, with my highest hit against the training dummy at the hotel reaching 6500 damage, and my weapon is only plus 9, not even a full plus 10. All that said, you've seen this thing just being absolutely bonkers strong now, so let's dive into what makes it that way, the setup that we have, the equipment, the legion arm, the levels, our P organ upgrades of course, and then just any more in-depth tips that that I have from my time using it so far. First up then, let's talk about the weapon. To make this work, we have a combination of the Live Puppet's Axe Blade, which is just the biggest, meatiest, heaviest detachable blade in the game, and then we stick it on the Dancer's Curved Sword Handle. This handle scales with technique, and it is also the source of our incredible moveset, and our generally more usable and versatile fable art as well, so the combination of the two really does a ton of good. To get the Live Puppet's Axe Blade and handle that goes with it as well then, from the Baron Swamp entrance Stargazer in Act 8, you want to progress through the level until you reach your first proper boggy, swampy area with a tower on the right. The tower will be firing artillery at you for your first time here, the, uh, well, I mean, someone on top of the tower, the tower isn't doing it itself. You can run up to the base of the tower though, and there's an entrance in the front. Work your way up to the top of the tower, doing your best not to get shocked to death, and then beside the artillery cannon at the top, there will be a puppet, and beside that puppet, there is a chest that contains the weapon itself. As for the dancer's curved sword handle and its complementary blade, you want to go to Chapter 6 and the rose Isabella Street Culvert Stargazer. From here you want to backtrack just a little bit, following my path through the upper section, and this gate here is a shortcut that you have to open up. But from this side, the puppets won't engage you unless you attack them first, which makes it ideal to just slip around the back stealthily to get to this chest here, which used to contain the weapon, I already had it when recording this clip, but this chest is where to find it. Once you have your two weapon pieces assembled together then, you of course want to upgrade the blade as much as you can, and stick a technique crank onto the handle too to boost the scaling even further. Then let's move on to talking about our amulets of choice. The best one for this build by a good margin is the Arm of God for an increase in attack power after hitting an attack. This works especially well with this weapon as the charged heavy attack is multiple hits and the first hit of this attack triggers the buff before the second hit connects to bump the damage up a nice amount and the second hit is where the real damage is in the charged heavy. This amulet comes from trading in the rare ergo from the boss of chapter 7 to Aladoro. The second best one for this is going to be any of the various destroyer amulets that boost your damage against specific specific enemy types, so especially for bosses you just want to equip the one of those that matches your target for a nice notable damage bump. Then for your third slot you'll want to have the Conquering Amulet, which gives you a pretty solid bonus around a 25% damage boost to your next attack after getting a perfect guard, as long as it happens within 5 seconds. Sadly this isn't triggered by our parrying fable art, only being triggered by proper perfect guards, but if you time it right you can trigger the effect with a normal perfect guard, and then use either of your fable arts on the next incoming attack to create our massive damage hit 
targets by lining that up. Otherwise, this is just big for a general damage increase, as you will be perfect guarding while playing the game and having just a bit more damage pumped out every time that you do for your next attack is great. This one also comes from trading in a boss ergo to Alidoro, specifically this one from the Flame King boss that you find relatively early on in the game. Then in your last slot, once you have four unlocked, you want to go with the Carrier's Amulet. This increases your carry weight limit by 15%, and the reason for this is it just lets you stick on heavier defensive parts to get yourself some more survivability. If you aren't quite at the point where you have four amulets yet, you can use this as one of your three, replacing the Conquering Amulet if you want survivability over damage, which is worth noting, that's mostly your choice. As far as getting this specific amulet, it is dropped along the main story path, so you probably do already have it, but just in case not, it is dropped from one of the big shovel bots right at the end of Act 3 on your way to Moonlight Town. Then we have our Legion Arm, and for this I absolutely recommend the Puppet String. When fully maxed out, you can hold this down to pull yourself into an enemy to essentially get a free jump attack off. Jump attacks are big damage multipliers, and we have a big, chunky weapon with high base damage, so the hit that we get off of it is quite nasty, and it lets you come in from range if the opportunity presents itself. Past that, we have our P-Organ setup, and this is going to have a bit of personal choice in it, of course. I won't tell you literally every single thing that you should do, but generally the upgrades that you want to go for are anything that is a straight-up damage increase, anything that specifically boosts the damage of Fable Arts or the charging of Fable Arts, since our Fable Arts are incredible. You also want to increase the regen of it and get any upgrades that give you extra Fable Art bars to charge up so that you can walk in with extra bars filled to the start of a boss fight, or even things that affect the Fable charging items so that you can generate Fable with those if you want to as well. Other than that, survivability upgrades are absolutely key. The specific upgrade that increases weapon durability with weight is actually really solid as we get quite heavy compared to most smaller weapon builds, and there is definitely some really good use for the specific upgrade that gives you 25% bonus damage on an attack done with full weapon durability. Specifically, as this means if you do it right, you can start a fight by hitting a perfect guard, then launch right off into one of your Fable Arts for your first hit of durability loss, which will be quite a big damage bonus. After that, let's talk about our levels and how we want to spend them. You want to aim for 30 vitality. That's just where the game feels relatively comfortable, even in later stages, and it's a good soft cap. 40 technique is absolutely ideal for our damage scaling, though if you are a lower level than I am, you can easily get away with doing 36 technique and using the technique amulet in your last slot instead of the conquering amulet. Aside from that, you just want enough capacity to actually make the build feel functional, enough carry weight to make it work. For me, that was right around 22 in this stat, which let me start to use some proper defense parts with the carrier amulet on, and then any bonus points you either want into vigor for more stamina, or just capacity so you can use bigger defense parts. Your choice, really. With that covered then, you now know what the weapon is and where to get the bits, the amulets that we want to use, the legion arm of choice, how to spend your levels, and your quartz as well to maximum effect. So let's talk about actually using the build itself. The thing is, this build is so strong that even playing like a monkey will get the job done. Even if you walk into a fight and all you do from that point is perfect guard on occasion and swing your weapon when it's safe to do so, the damage output is still just super high, but it is a bit more intricate than that to really get the most out of this. Because of our conquering amulet, you want to trigger a perfect guard before using either of your fable arts, and then on the immediate next attack, you have to perfectly time one of them for their maximum effect. Even the relatively forgiving timing window on the parry fable art can hit up to a whopping 3,500 on the training dummy if you get the timing on this right, and with it being a fable art that only costs one of your fable bars, when you are fully upgraded, you can do this five times right from the start of a boss fight if you walk in with full fable. Otherwise, your gameplay loop is pretty simple. Perfect guard, incoming attacks, and then use your charged heavy when you get any opportunity to do so. It does loads of damage, it happens pretty quickly, and it has tons of forward momentum on it to gap close on enemies to start to back away from you. Stick to those general concepts, weave in a few light attacks if you happen to find the opportunity, and then you'll find yourself just absolutely decking any fight in the game using this. And that just about does it for today then everyone. An extremely fun lies of P-Build that mostly hinges around the concept of a super giant heavy blade on the end of a light maneuverable handle with an excellent moveset, a couple of absolutely fantastic fable arts, and some fun amulets that synergize well with the way that the weapon works as a whole, then of course the Legion Arm, which also works particularly well with this. I hope you've enjoyed this build that I'm going to be calling the Dancing Puppet because of the weapon parts that we've sucked together of course, and I hope you enjoy using it for yourself too if you actually try it out in game. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye.